are listening to the Healthy Christian Women Podcast. Brought to you by Fit Plus Faith, the podcast for Christian women to grow healthier in their mind, body, and spirit. Jumpstart your health with your complimentary mind, body, and spirit detox checklist at healthychristianwomen.com slash detox. That's healthychristianwomen.com forward slash detox. Here's your host, Dr. Melody Stevens. Hello and welcome to the Healthy Christian Women podcast. I am your host, Dr. Melody Stevens, and this is season two, episode 40. If you're just joining us for these devotions, these episodes are taken from our live stream devotions that we do on our Fit Plus Faith Facebook page on weekday mornings at 8 a.m. Pacific time, and this is currently going through the devotion book called Faith, Fitness, and Food for Women. So without further ado, let's dive in to episode 40. Let's go ahead and pray, and we will jump in and get started this morning. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for these just amazing women that are here this morning, giving of their time uh, to be here together, to join together, to be a community, to learn from your word, to dive into this devotion. And uh, we just ask Holy Spirit that you speak to our hearts this morning about what it means to be strong and to do our duty what it is that you have laid before us uh, that we are able to participate in in this life. And so we just ask that you speak to our hearts regarding that message, what we need to hear and how we need to change and take action from this message this morning. We just thank you for all the women. We thank you for this community. We thank you for everything that you are doing in each of our lives for your unconditional and unending love for us. Even if we never changed, even if we went backwards and we became even we just became terrible people and we forgot everything that we knew about you, you still love us. So may we not be seeking to make change in order to gain your love, but seeking to make change in order to uh, show you how much we love you by how we live our lives and by how we steward the resources and the bodies and the lives and the minds and everything that you have given us. We ask all these things in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right. Oh, happy birthday, girl. And happy early birthday to Diana. Awesome. Love it. There is so many December birthdays that I know of. My sister and her husband and my niece and many other people in my family, all birthdays in December. It's just a busy month. So awesome. So we are talking about be strong and do your duty. That is the title of this morning's message. And the verse that we start off with this morning is 1 Chronicles 28, 20. First Chronicles 28, 20. Jordan says, if my charger is pink, my hubby won't take it. Yeah, that's really funny um, because I am the one taking his chargers. He's never the one taking mine. <laughs> oh my gosh. So it says, be strong and courageous and do the work. Don't be afraid or discouraged for the Lord God, my God is with you. He won't leave you or forsake you. That's 1 Chronicles 28, 20 from the Holman Christian Standard Bible translation. Oh, Jordan, that's wonderful. Jordan says, I have been praying to keep a close relationship with God even when the hard times, yes, even when the hard times are over. Yeah, exactly. It's easy to grow closer to God in the hard times. But then when life is easy, it's easy to kind of like put him on a shelf, you know, and then just do our own thing. And we do, we need to learn how to stay close to him, no matter what we're going through, whether it's easy or hard, that we stay close to the Lord no matter what. So thank you for sharing. So it says staying fit and eating healthy foods requires diligence, determination, patience, and perseverance. So it is really worth all the trouble and pain. Is it really worth it all? Yes. When you improve your health, you also improve your life. When you improve your health, you also improve your life. Hey, Karen, good morning. So go ahead. I want you to type that below. That is our mantra for this morning. When you improve your health, you also improve your life. So I want you to put it in the personal. I, Melody, when I improve my health, I also improve my life. I want you to say that out right now with your own name in that sentence, and then I want you to type it down below in the, I guess that's the first person. When I improve my health, I also improve my life. 
That is 100% true. Diana says we need to be in his word daily and pray and talk to him constantly throughout the day. Yes, absolutely. And no matter, no matter what kind of day we're having, whether it's an easy day or a hard day, you see. So while you're typing that below, yes, Diana, when I, Diana, improve my health, I also improve my life. If you're on this live stream right now, or if you are catching it on the replay, still write that down below because it is so true and you need to know it and you need that to be ingrained in your thinking, in your mindset. When I improve my health, I also improve my life. So type it down below. Yes, Jordan, diligence, determination, patience, and perseverance. I love it. So again, it says, staying fit and healthy and eating healthy foods requires diligence, determination, patience, and perseverance. Yes. I love it. Keep going. Keep going. There we go. Now I see all your comments coming in. Absolutely. When I improve my health, I also improve my life. So why are we working so hard to improve our health? Why is it important that we do these things? Why is it important that we eat well, that we shop and meal prep, that we exercise, that we don't go crazy on sugary foods and processed foods? Why is it important? Because when you improve your health, you improve your life. Like they literally go automatically together because our body responds to the food that we eat or the food that we don't eat. When we don't put bad things in it and when we put good things in it and when we make it move, it responds in a good way. It helps to prevent injury. It helps to keep you strong and healthy and active and mobile. And so thank you ladies for typing that below. That is your mantra for the day. So when you are tempted to do something or eat something that you know is not good for your health, let this come back. When I improve my health, I also improve my life. So therefore, just like that post that I posted in our group yesterday that said sometimes we need to say no to good things or to certain things, sometimes we need to say no because it actually means we're saying yes to better health. We're actually saying yes to something better. When we say no to certain things or even things that we think are good, so like, right, they taste good, right? Sweets and candies and, and all these things, they taste good, so they're good in one respect. But when we say no to those things, we're actually saying yes to better health because we're not putting that in our body. And so, Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. It says, but please don't think that your food and fitness efforts are for your benefit only. By increasing the chances that you'll live longer, healthier, happier, you're also performing an important duty for the people who love you and depend on you. And you're obeying the creator who gave you life in the first place. God wants you to take all your duties seriously, especially your duties to the people that he's entrusted to your care your family. What are you doing with the responsibility of your family that God has given you? By taking care of yourself, you are indirectly taking care of them as well. You are around longer, right? To give wisdom, to give a helping hand, to pray, to intercede. You are around longer to do those things. I talked with my grandmother a few months ago when I went out to visit her and um, man, you know, excuse me, as our parents and our grandparents get older, I'm finding that they're really special and precious in my life. And as some of them pass away, um, you miss them and you just realize, wow, I really need to cherish who I have, you know, and until their time is gone. And so I've really been feeling that pull to spend more time with my parents and grandparents. And so I spent some time with her a few months ago and she said um, her husband, my grandfather, passed away in 2000. So it's been 18 years. And she's like, sometimes I ask God, why am I still here? You know, she's 85 and she's still healthy and active, still living independently. She's had two knee replacements and she's just getting around great. And um, but she wonders, why am I still here? The love of my life, my husband is gone, you know, and my family is doing well. Why am I still here, God? Like, why do you keep me here? You know, take me home type of thing. And, and she said, God told her it is so 
that you can be praying for your family. God is keeping her here to be an intercessor for her family, to cover her family in prayer. And so she is healthy. She goes to workout class twice a week. She walks and she maintains an independent home. And so she's doing so well, right? And so why is she here? Why, why should she keep up her health? Why should she keep trying to, to go to these workout classes and to stay healthy and active? And God told her she's here to, to pray for her family. And so she takes that very seriously. And I get, to be a ble I get to be blessed by that. I get to be a recipient of her intercession. It's just so beautiful. It's so good. Jordan says, this is huge for me to be an example for my sisters and your family. Like, like you said before, absolutely. Paula says, I have had seven weeks without drinking. You will live longer, Paula. Congratulations to you. I am so thrilled for you. That is a major, major breakthrough. And we can praise the Lord that he is changing you, changing you and helping you make those changes and be an example for your family and show them that it is possible to change and that the Lord is faithful and helps people change. And so that's wonderful. Jordan says, so funny, me too. I talked to my granny for an hour this morning and every day for the last several months. I wish when I was younger, I would have spent more time with her. Well, you are now and that's so beautiful. Paula says, my grandmother is 93 and she says all of her friends are in heaven thinking she is in hell because she is still here. <laughs> yes, Teresa says, that is fabulous. I want to be that way in my 80s. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I talked to my grandmother about her health um, because I, I helped her lose weight um, quite a few years ago as well. And she lost like 40 pounds or something in her 80s. You know, it was just incredible. And she was so, so many people were inspired by her. Um, and um, yeah, and she, I don't remember if she said that she basically made a commitment to the Lord to be healthy, uh, but it was something along those lines that she wanted to take her health seriously and had made that commitment to the Lord many, many, many years before that she would do whatever she needed to do in order to be healthy and, um, and to really care for this body that she was entrusted to, and she is, and it's really incredible. Jordan says, Paula's grandmother is my great grandmother. Her and my granny are very funny and wise. That is amazing. That is so, so, so cool. So let's head into more of our, um, our um, what's the word I'm looking for? Scriptures or verses from today about God's word as well. It says, Hebrews 6, 11, and 12 says, And we desire that each of you will show the same diligence as so as to realize the full assurance of hope until the end, so that you will not be sluggish, but imitators of those through faith and patience inherit the promises. That's wonderful. Imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. We talked a lot about patience uh, the other day as well. Romans 14, 12 says, so then each of us shall give an account of himself to God, right? We will, we will one day give an account to God for our lives, what we did and what we didn't do, what was our responsibility to do and how we, how we responded. Revelation 2, 23 says, I am he who searches the minds and hearts and I will give to each of, of you according to your deeds. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 says, here is my final conclusion. Fear God and obey his commands for this is the duty of every person. Fear God and obey his commands. John 9, 4 says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. The night is coming when no man can work. The time of, the, of Jesus' return is coming and then it will be over. So what, what will we do until then and before then? We must work the works of him that sent us. And then uh, some quotes about duty, about our duty. Thomas Carlyle says, Our grand business is not to see what lies dimly at a distance, but to do what lies closely at hand. 
I like that. What lies closely at hand for you today? What lies closely at hand for your health? Corey Ten Boom says, don't bother to give God instructions, just report for duty. Every day, going to the Lord in prayer, what do you have for me today, God? What do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? How can I serve you today? And we can serve the Lord by asking him and following his guidance and by um, caring for this body, the temple, so that he can continue to work through us. John Ruskin says, God never imposes a duty without giving time to do it. Elizabeth Elliot says, discipleship usually brings us into the necessity of choice between duty and desire. Discipleship brings us to the necessity of choice between duty and desire. We do have to sometimes say no to the desires of the flesh, right? To say yes to what God has for us. And then C.S. Lewis says, the present is the only time in which any duty may be done or grace received. The present is the only time where any duty may be done or grace received. We receive God's grace here and now. We receive it now today and live in it. And then we do the duty that God has for us here and now. Living in the present, right? Not worrying about, the tom about tomorrow, as the Lord says, as the Bible says. Not worrying about tomorrow, but living and being in the present. And then our food, fitness, and focus tips today says, the food tip says, don't skip meals. Are you skipping meals? Don't do it. Skipping meals isn't healthy, and it isn't a sensible way to lose weight either. If you learn about the Daily Five, or you've heard about the Daily Five, or you go back and listen to the Daily Five, then we talk about eating small meals, but on a frequent basis. Hey, Teresa, good morning. Jordan says, I never understood why we should fear God until it hit me that it was about respect. Exactly, not fear as in being afraid, but about respect, that respect kind of fear. Such as fire, we need it, respect it, but know of the fire's power. Exactly, yes, right, fire uh, same thing, we must respect it or it can get out of control and be very harmful. But if we use it properly, it's very helpful, right? So yeah, absolutely. And then a uh, fitness tip says, join in the fun. Group exercise is a great way to stay fit and socialize at the same time. As an additional benefit, your fellow fitness buffs will give you the encouragement you need to stick with your exercise plan, exercising in groups. It is fun to have an exercise buddy or to exercise as a group. And then today's focus says, think about the rewards of a sensible exercise regimen combined with a healthy diet. That's really it right there, is a sensible exercise regimen and a healthy diet. Literally those two things together will transform your health. We don't need quick fixes, we don't need fads, we don't need pills, we don't need these things. I mean supplements, yes, but other kinds of crazy concoction pills, no. We just need to be sensible and then you, your body will change. <laughs> it will make the differences with a healthy diet and sensible exercise. Like literally that's it, but we overcomplicate it so often, don't we? Yeah. Um, oh, hey, Tammy. Tammy is your sister-in-law. That's awesome. Well, welcome to the whole family here this morning. So awesome, ladies. So thank you so much for being here with me this morning. And re let's remember our mantra from the beginning. When you improve your health, you also improve your life. That is it. So why are we improving our health? Why are we doing these things? Why are we making ourselves take these actions and abstain from certain things? When you improve your health, you also improve your life. So make it personal today. I, Melody, when I improve my health, I improve my life. And the same is true for you. So I loved that, that little saying this morning that came out of it. And um, I'm going to be running a uh, just... Some announcements for the future. I'm going to be running a 2019 vision casting uh, training. And so I don't have a date for that, but keep your eyes open for that so that we can be vision casting and planning for our 2019. What do we want that to look like in our life, in our health? Where do we want to be? What do we want? To, what changes do we want to see? What can we learn from 2018? And what do we want to take with us or leave behind as we head into 2019? So I'll be doing kind of like a vision casting, goal setting uh, workshop, online workshop uh, in, in a few weeks. 
Uh, I'll put a date together. So I don't have a date to tell you, but just be looking for that. If that's something you want to be a part of, then that'll be a really fun thing to do as we head into 2019 together, right? Supporting each other in our health and really making, how are we going to make it different? What are we going to put into play, put into practice? What do we need to leave behind and what do we need to put into practice in order to take our health to the next level and reach those goals that we're wanting for ourselves? So, uh, so I'll be doing that. was really excited, kind of brainstorming that for you last night. And then, uh, yeah, that's, that's what we've got going on. This is the last month. December is the last month. Just so you know, it's the last month for a few different things. It's the last month to get the early bird discount for those of you that are going to join us in our wellness retreat in Australia in May. The price goes up January 1st. Well, actually the price will probably go up, I think like in February, uh, but we're running that early bird discount through the end of this month. And then also for the Fit Plus Faith Lifestyle Membership to have all the tools and resources to be growing healthy in your mind, body, and spirit. That is a monthly, month-to-month -month membership to be a part of. And the price goes up on that January 1st. And so this is the final month to get that early bird member exclusive discount as well. So some exciting things happening in our community and in the future. And so I'm just excited to continue moving forward to serve you and to bless you and to provide things that are helpful for you. And so uh, it's my pleasure and joy to do it. So, all right, ladies, great to have you here this morning. Thank you so much. I will again see you tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Thursday this week is the only day that we will not have our devotion in the morning. Uh, Thursday is a travel day for me, so I'll be traveling. So we're not going to do it on Thursday, but it should be good to go on Friday morning as well. So I'll see you again tomorrow and then Friday. All right. So have a wonderful rest of your day. Love you all. And I will see you later. Bye. Oh, Jordan says, can we pray again? You want to pray at the end? Sure, girl. No, no worries. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for these women that were here, uh, that are here now, that are giving of their time. Thank you for the women that are going to come to see this on the replay and hear this on the podcast. We thank you so much just for everything that you're doing in each of our lives. We just lift, lift these women up to you this morning, God, that you would speak to their hearts, that you would continue to guide them, to, uh, to bless them, to give them patience, to give them grace and mercy everything that we receive from you freely, that they would open their hearts and minds to receive, that they would have a spark inside that creates change as we move forward, putting our health on the forefront and growing in community with one another, treasuring and nurturing our relationships and our friendships. We thank you for the community that you have brought here together. And we just, we just pray blessings over these women. God, they're so precious. And uh, they just pour into one another. And it's just such a beautiful thing to see and to be a part of. And we just ask that you take these messages that we are receiving from this devotion and how you are speaking to us each individually in our quiet times and that we would take action, God, that we would really take it seriously. We wouldn't just let it come in one ear and out the other, but that we would allow it to continue to change us, to change our perspective, to change our thoughts, to change our actions, and then therefore to change our lives because of you. We want you to be at the forefront of everything we do. We want to receive your power and receive your grace, receiving your forgiveness. We thank you and praise you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, ladies. Yes, have a blessed day. Okay, I will see you all later. This is Dr. Melody with Fit Plus Faith. Bye. Thanks for listening. Remember to subscribe and join me next week for the next episode of the Healthy Christian Women podcast. Inspiring Christian women to live healthier in their mind, body, and spirit. One day at a time. Grab your complimentary mind, body, and spirit detox checklist at healthychristianwomen.com slash detox. That's healthychristianwomen.com forward slash detox.